Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today with a collaboration with my friend Mary over at Mary's Nest. And I'm going to go ahead and link to her channel right up here. So be sure you check out her video too. And we're also making this an open collaboration to anyone else who wants to jump in and be a part. Any other content creators out there, let us know and we will add you to our playlist on our favorite secondhand finds. So let's get busy and I'll show you what I got here. So what I did is it's supposed to be our top three favorites, but I already told Mary that I was going to cheat and put it into three groups. So those who've been following me for a while know that I love to collect vintage and antique books. So this is just a small sampling of my vintage and antique book collection. And this one here was actually sent to me from a subscriber. And the copyright on this is 1890. And I do talk about this in one of my videos. I have two videos out there about uh, why I collect vintage and antique books and I show in both of them I show different books that I have because I have quite a collection so like I said this is a small sampling but anyway this is very cool and I go into more detail about it in one of those videos I'll link to at least one of them up here and then hopefully you'll find the other one through that and then so out of these again this is uh these are just some various ones this one is the Home Physician and Guide to Health, and this is also, I think, a late 1800s. That this was probably one of my most recent finds. I paid a whole dollar for it. Uh, out of all of my antique books, though, the my very favorite ones that I have found is this cookbook here that was printed in 1950, and. Uh, I don't use cookbooks a lot, but when I do, unless they're my own, you know, my own recipes that I put together, but when I do use a cookbook, this is going to be the cookbook I'm going to turn to because it, this was back before they started, you know, recipes were written in adding a can of this and a, and a box of that and a package of something else, and that's why I prefer old cookbooks. And again, that's why um, this one here, this one is a really good one too, and I would say actually would uh, go in tandem with that other one. This actually has recipes written out the way I would write them out. A pinch of this, a little of that, you know, without, you know, having a whole lot of exact ingredients. That's the way I tend to do things. So very, very cool books. Love them. 50 cents I paid for that one back there. Now another just really, really awesome find was this little tiny uh, it's a New Testament, King James, and this was late 1800s as well. It even has some writing in here. Uh, I believe I show this in another one of my videos, and you know, this you could tell was well used. It was at a secondhand like vintage antique store that used to be here, and they were closing up the business, so they were just trying to get rid of everything, and I was sure they were going to ask a lot more for this because the date written here is 1886, the handwritten date because it was presented to the person as a gift at that time. And uh, they, uh, I just said, how much do you, they didn't even have a price on it. I said, how much do you want? And they said, a oh, dollar. And I'm like, cool, I'm good with it. I would have paid a lot more for it, to be honest. But a dollar, that was well worth it for a, a King James New Testament that's that old, especially. And now my second category is my oil lanterns. Now, again, this is only some of the oil lanterns I have found secondhand. I do have a couple of bigger ones that I found that, um, in fact, a couple of more ones I bought at the same place I got this from, the, the antique store. But uh, the mini oil lanterns are the ones I really like to go for because I have plenty of big ones and the mini ones I tend to use a lot. Now some people, I had someone on one of my videos where I was talking about lighting, that they found the mini ones to be not very practical for them. Well, it really just depends on your needs. For me, they're very practical, and I, in fact, I tend to use them more than I do the bigger ones. So all of these were found secondhand, and I particularly like to keep these small ones in the bathrooms when you just don't need as much light. It's a small room. Like this one here, I love the copper. This one goes in our, our back bathroom off the foyer back here, off the laundry room. And then this one goes in our main bathroom. And this one gets used a lot. So this is probably, this is probably the most used one out of all my little ones. Because get up early in the morning, I'm going to shower and it's dark. Then this is what I light. I don't 
I don't turn on the, the power, the public power lights. I like to use the little kerosene lantern. Well, this one has kerosene in it. Everything else we use clean heat in. But then this one, this one is probably my very favorite. This is another one that I found at that same shop. There's a few of these things here I found at that same antique store when they were going out of business. Now, the cool thing about this, I loved the glass on it and just fell in love with the lantern. But what I didn't like about it at the time is it was sitting, it's got a, the glass has a little glass peg at the bottom, so you can't just take this off and set it by itself. It was actually made to be mounted to something. And it was on this ugly square box that wasn't even wood. It was like pressed fiberboard. You could tell it was made in the 70s with some kind of paper over it, wood looking paper. You know, that was the big thing in the 70s. That's why I'm pretty sure it was in the, made in the 70s. But what Mr. Rain did was he took this apart. He took that off because I said, I love this lamp. I hate the, the fake wood box. And then he actually made this base for it out of walnut. So it's really beautiful. So that is category number two. And then my third category is the cast iron. So all these things here, all these trivets, uh, including the ones up on the wall, these are ones that I found at garage sales. Now this one here is not a Griswold, but it's it's a replica of a Griswold, and actually, uh, which I have a Griswold one, and that's the other one that's hanging over there. It looks exactly the same in shape and pattern, except for this one. I actually like it a little bit better for using, uh, you know, that one's for decor, this one I use, and the reason why is because it has taller feet on it. So my, all of my cast iron trivets, all of them, this one has little short feet, I have got at garage sales, or, you know, secondhand stores or whatever. Um, I think all of these I did get at garage sales and paid, you know, really low prices for them. And the thing that's cool is they all have different length in their feet like these two are, are taller like that one or this one is shorter and so these I use frequently on my wood stove when I'm cooking on my wood stove if I if I don't want something to cook too fast then I set it on the on a taller trivet if I want to keep it warm or if I want to keep it warm I sit on a taller trivet if I want it want it to cook fairly decently like say a pot of rice and the fire is really hot and I don't, you know, putting it directly on the wood stove is going to cause it to cook too fast. Then I'll just set it on one of these, one of the shorter ones, and uh, and that will cook it at the right speed. And so those these get used quite a bit. But probably out of all of my favorite cast iron finds, even though I love these things quite a bit, my favorite ones, and this these were also bought at the antique store, uh, and they bought them together, so I can count this as one, were these two cast iron pans. They were actually stacked together like this, and I went up and offered them a price for both, and they, they accepted it. They had $10, I think, on each one, and I paid 10 for the whole thing. Originally, I thought this one, because it says 1891, I talked about it in another video, I thought it actually was made in 1891. It has uh, instructions on how to, uh, to um, season it, but I believe when I got to look in, in more into it that that was just a, a specialized thing that was done, I think, in the 70s maybe. I can't remember when these were actually made. But still, this is one of my very, these are my two very favorite cast iron pans. Now that um, we don't need, you know, it's just the two of us, we don't, we rarely ever need to use anything bigger than these. And this is my favorite for cooking potatoes in. And then this for everything else has kind of got a walk shape. Now this one, I did look around on the internet to find one like this and it was very difficult to find just to see if I could get a date on it. And um, it does look like this one was made in the late 1800s. So what, whatever year they were made doesn't really matter to me because these are great pans. I love them. I use these two all the stinking time. And uh, there's, neither one of these out this one is a Wagner's this one is Wagner's this one I don't really doesn't really have a name on it it just has a description and by that and the shape I was able to and the, and the size able to find one and online and it was I think 1899 or something like that. if you've been following me for any amount of time you know that I love to do a garage sales, yard sales, anything thrifty, and I have tons of different types of things and tons of categories. 
this was just to narrow it down to a few things <laughs> as best I could. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on my favorite secondhand finds, you know, even though this is just a few of them because I have lots and lots in all different types of categories, fabrics and housewares and clothes and all kinds of stuff. But I do hope that if you're not a content creator, then please comment down below and share with us your various secondhand finds, what you use them for, how often do you use them, whatever. What, have, what has been your top favorite finds? And if you are a content creator, then Mary and I invite you to be a part of this collaboration. Go ahead and make your video of your favorite finds and how you use them, what they are, and all that kind of stuff, and even what you paid for them, if you can remember. <laughs> And then send us the link, you know, you can put it in a comment down below so that people can see that and we'll also make sure we get your video in our playlist. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.